Hey guys, welcome back. <clears throat> Today we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. Oh, what's that? <laughs> I don't know why that's up there. Um, there are a few things that I want to show off, all of which happen to come from uh, Static's channel. He's an Australian guy who plays Minecraft and stuff, and he's got some pretty neat, uh, interesting things on his channel that I wanted to share with you guys. I mentioned this thing, or I mentioned this thing actually in the in the last. Uh, let's play episode that I uploaded. Uh, it, I'll probably upload this next. So, um, yeah, this is the glass pane detect or the the long range wireless redstone thing. I just had it turned off because the piston goes. For it's kind of annoying. Um, these boats are both on this thing. From this one block, I can get two different signals. I mean, I only I don't think I can get more than that. I tried having another one out here, but when I place the boat, it, it faces this direction, which doesn't work very well. Okay, they actually face west, which is interesting. It's kind of a strange direction to face. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so, when I come down here, if I... Oh, well, you can see that, um, that, w that boat dropped, even though it's on the thing, and as soon as I look away from this, it picks it back up. But whenever I'm looking at this block, it takes, it thinks that that block right there only has this block's detection box, so it's this little black box around it. Um, and apparently it works when you look at the other side of it too, which I didn't know. Which is pretty useful. But you can see that I can have both of these, uh... No, actually, hold on, I want to see something. Okay. And now if I go like this, sweet, both drop. That's cool. Because I can look at this one right here, and it's taking it as a flat, as a straight this way, so both sides have no collision, which means the boats are dropping. Um, which is interesting, and that actually works for any of these ones. Um, which is neat, because I can pick right, left, or both. Um, the only problem with that is that I'd have to fit it in an area. I mean, if I do it, uh, if you watch the, the video that I made about this, then, um, I've said a decent amount about this already there, uh, in my Let's Play video. But, uh, if you shoot, like, okay, there are three levels of the detection. You can either, st uh, look at one, which is the, the like, weakest frequency, um, you can, well, actually, I don't know why I put that sideways. Let's try this, like that. You can touch one, which, okay, apparently, <laughs> a full block. That's weird. Um, let's line up a bunch of them, and I'll walk into this. Yeah. And then if I walk into this one, that one falls. But if I walk into this one and look at that one, you can see that it's still just picking the one that I'm walking into. Um, and if I take an arrow and I shoot it at this one, it's that counts as uh, one of the ways of doing it. And then if I step on this one, it doesn't change anything. So arrows are the best way to go. Um, Particularly if you have glass panes just like used in your house or whatever, because then you can um, you can touch your glass panes and not worry about it messing up your redstone signals. Uh, but then again, if you've got a full wall of them, like if your glass panes go like this, then oops, that didn't work out so well. Um, if you go like this with your glass panes, then you have nothing to worry about because this right here is the same as the default way that it's holding it up over there. Well, then again, if your glass, pol glass pane wall was this way, apparently it does nothing. Okay. Um, this should be affecting it. I don't know why it's... Oh, because there's an arrow in this one, right? If I remove that... Yeah. Alright. Uh, but yeah, you can see that it doesn't do anything when I walk into this because of that, but this one would, so um, I take that back. But um, if your glass panes are like this, though... Then you... Oh, can you? 
apparently you can. I guess that works too. Never mind. <laughs> um, I obviously haven't experimented with this much, but um, I intend to because it's pretty neat. Um, oh, so bad at just breaking grass all the time. Um, and this does work really far away, so like if I come all the way over here, outside the noise of the piston, <laughs> I can have one go and the other one. And what's neat is it's actually like direction based here, because if I look at this one right now, and I look at the right one, the right one falls. If I look at the left one, the left one falls. And it works the same way on the on the other side too, instead of having to flip it around. But anyway, I'm going to turn this off for now, just because it's loud and obnoxious and I set that up because I've been killing iron golems, and I realized that I could use a good sword, so I just... Apparently you don't need a... a you don't need experience to level up stuff. Wow, I have a bunch of crap in my inventory. Um, so you can just put stuff in, and enchant it. Yay. It's pretty neat. Um, <clears throat> now this thing. This part up here is entirely unnecessary. It was just me doing something to... Uh, like, okay... This is a player detector, first of all. It's not on right now. This cart's just running around. But this plate right here, when I flip this switch, I mean, I'm nearby, so it's going to detect it. But this, the way it works, okay, yeah, let's just turn that off for now. Um, the way it works is that this cart stops here because of this fence gate, because when it's closed, oh, yeah, it's just going to open again. Um, yeah, that's annoying. Um, when it's closed, the... Um, Oh, it's because I'm giving it power with this thing, so it stays open, and whenever it I close it, it updates again whenever anything nearby updates, or something, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> this is basically a particle detector, as well as a player detector, I guess. Um, this pressure plate right here, when the cart is on this block right here, stopped by the pr this thing, it's almost on the pressure plate, but it's not actually on the pressure plate, and for some reason... The way the game works is that when one of these particles from the, the Iron Golem's feet uh, lands on this pressure plate, the added weight of the particle and the um, cart make up enough weight to send a signal. So um, you can take this and make um, and particles only show up when you're when it's within 16 blocks of the player, like. I don't know if you can see it, but they stopped making particles now. Um, but yeah, so this is, down here is just a pulse length thinner. Um, this part right here, this is where it comes down, and it powers that block and this block. This block right here just is to power down so that we can send the signal back out to the output. Um, but this one, it sends power over here and then down to the output and then sends power over here and down to the output, and then sends power over here and down to the output. So, um, whenever you get one pulse, it lasts for, I think, like, 24 ticks, because there's eight on each side, um, <clears throat> plus, like, one or, or, plus, like, four from down here, I guess, um, or something. <laughs> I have no idea. And, uh, <clears throat> so that just means that, because it's not totally reliable, like, you can see it sits there for a bit sometimes, and, um, the reason I've put two here, I will back up a little bit, um, the reason we've put two here, or I've put two here, is because one sometimes isn't really reliable. I've had problems where, apparently if the iron golems are too close to this track here, they will push the cart back and it'll bounce up and down between these little areas here. Like, it'll, it'll be sitting here and then it'll bounce up to here and then bounce back down and then bounce up and then down because of the powered, pl the powered, uh, minecarts tracks. Our minecart tracks, and um, oh, I also got out of range. But you can see it took a second for both of them to go there. Um, so sometimes the signal will just turn off, which makes it kind of unreliable. I mean, if I could get a longer pulse lengthener, if, like see right there, that one wait uh, went long enough to not emit a uh, signal for a couple seconds, or for like a second and a half. But um, so I put two of them to make sure that one is always on. And it's worked pretty well so far. Um, if I just... Oh, cool, they fixed it. For a while, that would just give you glowstone. Um, if I go like this, you can see that that will pretty much stay on all the time because one is always on. 
because um, when one turns off, it only turns off for like a couple seconds, um, which usually means that the other one is going to stay on long enough. Um, this up here was just to get the iron golems inside easily, because if you build it like... Um, no, that just gives me bedrock. Uh, I'm going to have to grab it from in here. If you build it like... Because if you build it like this, with a pumpkin on top, let's pretend that's a pumpkin, they fall and they land in this, like, in this block here, in these blocks, and then you have to push them in, and uh, I kept having problems where I would log in, and the iron golems would be stuck in the wall next to them, uh, next to the little holding areas, and then they would die, and it made a lot of noise, and I kind of need them in there. Because this does work, apparently, with one iron golem, but it's not as reliable because they don't, they don't get... You know, of course it rains. Why wouldn't? Why wouldn't it, guys? Why wouldn't it? I'm just gonna remove this now, uh, with my awesome sword, apparently. Um, just so you guys can see what it looks like without it. <clears throat> um, these could be okay. Yeah, with the rain and stuff, uh, those are gonna be going pretty active because um, the rain is a particle, so it does count for the detector, and. Um, it will just cause it to go crazy and work like a hundred percent chance all the time, so it makes a lot of noise. But um, <clears throat> I like to just seal off the top here. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna go sleep just real quick because it's gonna be a long video anyway. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let's see. That should turn off the rain. Come on, anytime now. Anytime now. There we are. Alright, um, so yeah, this is just to turn it off so that it holds the gate open so that the thing can just go around, which does mean that this is emitting a constant pulse, or, <clears throat> that's not accurate. It's, it's pulsing enough that it's constantly emitting power. I suppose you could invert it so that, um, it's not, but, I don't know. Um, let's see, I do have four iron golems in each of these. Oops, I didn't mean to hit you, buddy. You can see there's four, and there's four in the other one, too. Um, you could build these underground, and that works pretty well as far as I can tell, because, like, they function until 16 blocks away from the mobs inside, which means, like, about 14 blocks up from here, I believe, is when it stops working, uh, which means you can be 14 blocks up from the center of one, but you could move it up a little bit, like, say, move it up five blocks, and then give yourself, like, you know, uh, maybe six or seven block width area to be able to still have it activated, so you could have it underground, and then whenever you get within, like, seven blocks or something, just have it activate, which would be pretty cool. <clears throat> and I think I might use that for, like, a door or something, so you could just walk up to it, and it'll turn on, and you can walk through, and then once you're through the door, you know, you get six or seven blocks away, and it deactivates. So it would be like a player-detecting door, which is pretty awesome, I think. Um, and that reminds me, over here, underneath there is a clock, and I will show you how to build that because it's not quite so... What am I doing here? It's, um... It's underground, and you can't see it. So, this is all really simple, because that's just the piston with the thing, you know. Obviously, you can you can see what that is, and if you don't know how to build it, then I'm sorry. You're probably bad at Minecraft. <laughs> um, so we have that, and that, and that. And then the output is just here. And you can see that it emits a long pulse and then a short downtime, which is what allows the piston to keep the boats up, because normally if it was just a regular pulse, the boat would have enough time to fall, um, but this way it doesn't. And I guess you could decrease the duration of this, but that just, um, well, I guess that makes a constant one. But three, I mean, it, it'll pulse more. Actually, I think it still works if you put it down to two, but I'm not really sure. Um... But it just makes it pulse more, which is going to make your piston go more, which will probably just lag you, like, or lag your game. So I wouldn't suggest you do that. Now this thing, it's hard to show off because it's so big and the pistons start glitching when they get far away. Um, but this is basically a downward signal sender, and you can pull signal from the sides here. Like you can see everyone has a piston on it. That's just to show that they uh, actually go at the same time because... Um, I found that each layer of this is one tick of delay. So, like, you can see up here, this one and the one beneath it should go at the same time. Yeah, see? 
they actually, and all of the pistons down this row will go at the same time, but the bottom ones are far enough away that you can't really see it. Um, you can see those ones are going at the same time. It's really pretty neat, because uh, this whole way down, and you just need one, um, one delay of, you know. So, uh, you can, I've, I'm sure there's a way to build it thinner than this. As it is right now, it's too wide. Um, that's the only way I know how to build it. Uh, I tried a thinner, a uh, one wide version over here, but I was not successful. So, that's just, uh, ignore that real quick. I'll just destroy it because it was totally unsuccessful. I was really hoping I could come up with one because I know Static was looking for one, and I think he actually managed to come up with a way to tile them, which is pretty cool, but, um... Because his, I think, were actually one wide, and I'm not really sure how he did it. But, uh, anyway, so this is, it's a pretty simple design, it's just that when you, um, what happens is you push the button, and the, the piston pushes this whole row of things down, and then that activates, like, this is sending signal constantly to this block, and then when that goes off, it pushes this down one, so that this block is now here, which allows the signal to be sent through. And this is, uh, 12 blocks long so that the pistons can actually push it, because that's as long as pistons can push. And there are, f uh, well, I guess nine ticks of delay. You want to have that many, uh, because that's what works for the whole one tick thing. Uh, that's, that's what I would do. I mean, I'm not really sure if you could get away with less. Um, yeah, probably not. Because notice how when I press this, it comes back almost immediately. Well, that's only because I've got this specific timing, so I would stick with that. Um, it is the exact same timing for every level, which is nice. Um, and yeah, so it's pretty simple, and it sends Brinson signal down really far, and you can easily get them to go all at the same time just by having the one at the top have one delay more than the one underneath it, and which I think is pretty neat because you can have something activate at the same time on all floors of your house. And it does go down 12 blocks at a time. Um, well, I guess you're sending the signal down like 1, 2, 3, 4, 13, 4, well, yeah, 13 blocks. I just pull it from this side because um, it, well, w without this, it's necessary to activate this piston instantly. As soon as this gets pushed down, this piston gets activated uh, because once this block is in place, this activates, which or this gets powered from that repeater, and then activates this piston. So it's pretty much instant. As soon as that one goes down, this one goes down. Um, or as soon as physically possible, when this one goes down, the other ones go down. Let's see how quick it is. Okay. My red. Oh, I made a glitch. My redstone in my hand keeps getting in the way. Um, yeah, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I don't know, you can see that it's it's pretty much instant. So, um, it's a good way of sending signal down. Um, it does have the one tick delay, but... Uh, I suppose I suppose that's probably one tick, isn't it? Between me pressing this button and it getting to the next thing. But yeah, you do have to wait a second. Um, I would just make an AND gate with a little loop, so when you press the button, it turns off the AND gate, so that you can't press it again for, like, two seconds. Um, because, like, if I press quick, and then press it again, things get weird, and... I mean, it works, but, because as long as this block is in here, it'll go around. I mean, there's a long enough delay that it gives the ti this piston time to retract and get back to normal before the power gets to it, so... It doesn't break very easily. Um, it just, it just functions a little weird. It doesn't necessarily break. You don't have to change anything. But yeah, so that's pretty neat. Um, it's a good way of sending a signal down really long distances. I mean, I suppose you could also just use this. But, like I said to you guys earlier, um, this can cause some problems because... You know, I'm surprised those boats aren't falling. That's odd. Yeah. Um, this way... Like, doing it this way 
the way I see it, there are six ways that you could do it. You could either have this one, which has the, um, which has one, well, I guess there are four ways that you can have it. Two, three, where both are going, and then this way where there's none. But this is kind of the default way, so I don't see how that would really work, because, um, like, unless you want one of four things to be active at all times, in which case you could easily do that. Um, and then you just have this one powers one thing, this one powers another thing, and then when they're both active, they add together to power something else. Um, and you could just build, like, NAND gates for these ones, so that it's, or XOR gates, actually, so that one is active but not the other, and then you can, actually, not an XOR gate, you'd want a NAND gate, so that when this one's active, power, and this one isn't active, power goes through, and then same for that one. But yeah, and then you can do the same thing with um, iron bars. So I will turn that off for a second. Actually, I'm going to turn it off by doing this. Because I need to put iron bars in. <coughs> Oops. I always do that. Okay. I'm going to do that. You can see that it does the exact same thing. So you can have several frequencies, and like I said, doing it with a bow is, like, it it's the override feature for any, like, other thing that you do. Let's see what happens if I do this. Yeah, the latest one that you do will update, so oh, that went right through. Um, so you can just have it so that dispensers shoot into the things to update all the stuff. And that's probably the best way to do it if you don't want things to get all complicated and affecting each other in weird ways. Um, because, like, also that lasts a while, so, you know, you can just leave the arrow in. Where you can't do that if you're just, like, looking at it, you know. Anyway, um, so that's been the whole video. That's all the uh, interesting stuff that I've gotten from his channel so far. Uh, I mean, he's got an elevator, but that's ridiculously... Uh, um, <laughs> It's a bit complicated, so I'm not going to try to do that, because that would be crazy. Uh, but this stuff I could feasibly do in my Let's Play, because it's all pretty simple. This one requires quite a bit of stuff for Iron Golems, but this is the first player detector I think I've ever seen that actually you can build in-game, like, without actually hacking stuff in, like spawners or something. So that's pretty cool, or mods or anything. And uh, this is a good way of sending signal down really long distances. Uh... I suppose it also works up. I haven't tried it. But... Actually, no, I don't think it would. Would it? I don't know. That might be iffy. I'm, I'll see... I might make a video on that and see if we can manage to make it go up. But, um... You can always just stack torches on blocks to send it up. Like this. Um, which, I mean, it alternates the signal, but you can see that if I just... I don't have a lever. I don't have a lever. Man, the block switching thing is so easy. You can see that when I press that, it swaps. And it swaps pretty quickly, too, so... Um, that's nice. But, I mean, this is just cool. I mean, come on. It doesn't require sticky pistons, either, which is nice. This one doesn't require any pistons, actually. It's just a bunch of repeaters and um, some minecart tracks and stuff. And a bunch of iron for the golems, of course. And this one's pretty simple, too. I mean, it does require a sticky piston, but... It's a ridiculously simple design, so. Anyway, that's all I have for today. So, thank you guys for watching, and hopefully we'll get this stuff implemented into some kind of design at some point or another. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye!